uh, very nice to be here and among this uh, large audience. Um, I will talk to you a bit uh, infrastructure and I will uh, talk to you from my experience uh, how uh, I actually live the new database thing which is in the cloud. And first of all, I want to say that uh, this is an extension to a system. So you should see all my presentation like uh, you see the you keep your current stack and you put this side to that stack because often people are confused uh, how we do this. So, uh, Marton, my actually GD story is part of being on Stack Overflow very active. Uh, I contributed a lot of uh, answers, probably some are for you. So I see that there, is a, there has been a contest here, like uh, Georgia should name the first GDE until 2020. And uh, being a contributor active on Stack Overflow is something that uh, uh, aggressively helps this. So you should make uh, a lot of posts on uh, Stack Overflow. Uh, what we will do today here, so we are going to build a high performance, better wide scale, and eventually a reporting system. So it's not a traditional system, it's an extension to it. And this is Google BigQuery. Who uses BigQuery today from the audience? Okay, who writes CQL code from the audience? SQL. Great. <laughs> Who has terabytes of data in the database? Great. No, this is great because often people don't deal with terabytes of data, and terabyte is actually a good uh, uh, way of doing it. So uh, I have here a list of features. What is BigQuery? As you probably noticed, that uh, it's a data warehouse in the cloud. Uh, it has all the CQL standards, so you work with tables, views, create table, and everything. And uh, one of the hidden gem of the cloud, the English word hidden gem, is very, very good for BigQuery. What you see here is that uh, for one terabyte, it only costs 20 bucks. So all the managers in the company are willing to pay this amount for storage, which is extremely cheap, and you can keep a side copy of your database on BigQuery. And uh, nowadays, we can write uh, machine learning inside CQL. Yeah, with CQL syntax, we can do machine learning. I will show you how. Uh, if we go further, uh, BigQuery's attribute is actually, it's, uh, if I go here and I say that this is a struct, which means that you can combine a bit of NoSQL into the BigQuery. You can work with JSON function and all the advantages of, uh, of this kind of struct and all kind of information. Uh, a feature straight into the BigQuery. So uh, BigQuery introduced partitioning and clustering in order to reduce uh, data size and uh, also to reduce costs. What you see on the first uh, issue is that you create a table by using partition and cluster by. And the partition, when uh, it's not used, it's uh, 200 terabytes processed. And you see here it takes, uh, oh, I don't know, large number. When you use with, uh, with, uh, the partition, with the partitioning between, it only processed megabytes of data. And actually, this is cost fraction of it. So this is one of the good benefits uh, using BigQuery. OK, let's see a practical example. Load from a file. Load from a file is like three lines of code, literally, in C Sharp, in Java, PHP. Who uses C Sharp? C Sharp, PHP? Yeah, good. Uh, it's three lines of code. Uh, it's very easy. Streaming rows is what we actually use, and the BigQuery's uh, ability is to actually ingest one million rows per second. One million rows per second. So if you have an IoT device that <laughs> generates data like this, you can feed that into BigQuery. It won't be a gateway timeout problem. You won't get such, such information like that. So it's better by its scale. Uh, the next side is actually representing uh, importing data using cloud functions. Often people, uh, when go to the cloud, what they do, uh, they drop a file on the cloud because that's actually the easiest thing to drop uh, eventually in Google Cloud Storage a file. You can set up a trigger to watch that bucket and observe that file. That file could be a CSV, could be a JSON, even Avro, all kind of modern files. And it's picking up that file, and it can import into BigQuery. That's easy to actually start working with BigQuery. As you see here, 
uh, I will keep on my slides that this is on-premise. I mean, your current stack, it's not in the cloud, and that part is in the cloud. It will keep repeating in the sites. How to do a cloud function? This is a Node.js example. It's pretty minimal. You need to add only two or three lines to this example. So it's not a pseudocode. It's a working example, just two or three lines you need to add to this. Uh, what you see here is that uh, it has a CSV source format, and it loads to a table that uh, is coming from, uh, from the blocket. OK, so my presentation will be, the next slides will be how to get from your current stack into BigQuery. And that, as you mean, you need to do an ETL process, extract, transform, load process, in order to get to BigQuery. So this answers these questions, like how can we use the benefits of BigQuery? We at Rea, in Romania, we created a, a, a middleware in our stack. And that middleware is the FluentD component on this chart. What you see on this chart here is that you have all sorts of events, which could be business events, could be system logs, and it's fitted into FluentD. FluentD forwards to also to your actual servers, so it's a middleware you can add to your current stack, and also forwards to BigQuery, and also forwards to cloud storage. So it's, it, it does multiple things, and later, being data in BigQuery, you can actually get to the interfaces of Tableau and uh, Data Studio, and you can build queries for it. This job requires like one day. It doesn't uh, something ex uh, extraordinary. You can go back uh, tomorrow to your office and you can try it out. BigQuery free plan uh, covers one terabyte of data per month. So you ca it's a generous uh, free plan. In Fluendi, you can copy this, this example, which means that uh, it loads into the BigQuery and uh, you add the keys in order to authenticate your application. For what we use this? So we had to optimize product pages. Like if you have a web shop, you maybe use Google Analytics to actually track some things, but Google Analytics doesn't know the person. In order to track the person who does this, we feed the same information into the BigQuery. So we created a little JavaScript snippet as the Google Analytics offers you, and we added the people in there. And it's actually adding all the information into the BigQuery. We also did the same with the email engagement. So we track the open click of the email in order to see, OK, at 9 AM, the customer is checking his email. We should send an email five minutes earlier. And all this information resides in BigQuery, and we query from there these metrics. The benefit is actually to run SQL on big data queries, let's name like that, because it will accumulate a lot of data. Uh, I can give the tool to also to analysts in order to write their query, and uh, no more throwing away data, and it's pure serverless. You don't need to maintain uh, interfaces, VMs, indexes. It's, it's just there for you. It's an API endpoint as it is. I'm rushing this uh, a bit because I have a second part of the presentation, which is the newest addition to BigQuery. It's not about Data Studio, but Data Studio is a, is a product from Google Cloud Platform, which integrates well into BigQuery. It's drag and droppable. And you can build this interface. And all the information behind this interface is coming from uh, BigQuery data. And it can be an integrated dashboard in your office uh, somewhere for example. Now, the true magic of uh, BigQuery is actually when we are able to run machine learning uh, thing in the database. Yeah, we are living that era when we are able to do machine learning straight from a tabular data. By tabular data, I mean tables. So the BigQuery ML initiative is actually uh, executes from data a, ma a model. When the model is ready, you can actually query it, predict, recommend on this model, and you can automate common tasks for it. Let's put this into a map. So if, if I need to mention that uh, uh, probably you have heard about TensorFlow, uh, that needs a data scientist as well, not just developer. Someone needs to actually think the TensorFlow model for it. Then there is AutoML and Cloud, CloudML, which is actually an interface thing. You drop a zip file of images, and they do the magic. And between, there is BigQuery ML, which is actually, you need to be SQL ready, and you need to write the SQL. Right now, there are lots of uh, models ready in BigQuery. Some of those are in alpha. 
But uh, Google launches a big conference next, so probably they will be announced in uh, beta. The alpha is public alpha, so you are able to actually get into this alpha by uh, contacting your Google uh, uh, relatives, as I am on all the Googlers who were here today. And we can help you to actually at least to try this out uh, for your data. I will show only just two models for you for here. And I won't show the theory behind these models, because it's actually, for this phase, we don't need to know the theories. So there is an example which is accessible and by that link, and you can try out at home. It will create a model that actually will predict uh, from a <laughs> website hit uh, the, visitor who will, the visitors who will make a transaction for it, based on the machine learning algorithm. And for this, you need to write three queries. A create model, an evaluate, and a predict one. How does create model look like? Hopefully, you see in the black as well. So I'm coming here. It's not create table. It's create model. I have some parameters there. And then I have a select, which is the input for the create model. The select is the same that you write today. What you need to write at this mission is that, on this case, you need to add a label, which is actually, in this example, is true or false. Has something, doesn't have something. Did something, not only something. Based on this, it builds up a data. And it completes uh, in seven minutes. I mentioned that it completes in seven minutes because this is not select to return data. It's to build a model. So it takes seven minutes. It's not something that uh, works like that. But it takes some time. After that is ready, you have the amazing machine learning model ready to be queried. The from is here, but you also have a from on the author query. And the author query is actually a wrapper. You are predicting from the subquery. The subquery has the same select as before, but doesn't have the label. And uh, I didn't mention that this actually targets different time frame. So we actually chosen to train the model using, let's say, January data. And we are now predicting for other data. And uh, that's it. The predict will output on the bottom. You see that 68% accuracy for the first row and uh, 61 accuracy for the second row. How can we use this data? Uh, this data actually can, um, let's say, used on a product recommendation, uh, thinking out uh, technically filling in the zeros. Because if we don't know nothing about a user, it means that we have zero on them, and we need to fill out the zeros technically. Often machine learning is like, OK, identifying something. But business related is that filling out the zeros. On my next example, it means that I have a table of users, John, Alice, Mary, and I have the products. I just put the vegetable fruits, but it can be your products, what you sell on a, on a shop. And you build out this matrix from your uh, existing data. In SQL, it's not a matrix. It's a pair of information in rows. So it's a big pile of rows. That's your select statement. And before that, you create the model. Actually, right, create model and the select that produces this uh, information. You have a bunch of zeros. Like, for example, the task here is to sell coffee, because coffee is not used very well. You have a bunch of zeros. But in a real situation, you have like 2 million of users with zeros. And you need to sell to 2 million. But you have budget to sell only to 1 million. By saying that I have budget to 1 million, I mean that I need to filter out from 2 million the exact users or some users that actually are targeted to actually turn and convert buying coffee. I need an order buy, technically, because it means from ton, there were 2 million, I need the first 1,000. But how do I order buy if I have a bunch of zeros? It cannot be ordered buy. Matrix factorization machine learning model comes into hand to build out, in this example, it's on the bottom. You see some numbers added to the zeros, like 0 to 0 0.045, and so on. So some numbers are added there. The machine learning model actually fill this information. Now you can order buy, and you can choose the top uh, 1,000 uh, item from it. 
this can be done on your current uh, stack. You could, for example, go back to your office. You can create a big CSV file from your product. That CSV file can be uploaded to Google Cloud Storage. You can import in BigQuery, which is like a one-hour task. You Google it for the create model syntax. You wait for seven minutes or 10 minutes, two hours, depending on data size. And then you can select it. The output will be a bunch of lists, but you can order by and pick the top one. In examples, as you see, create model is there. In the create model, if I go here, I selected only three columns for my data set, even if it has multiple. I selected the user, the item, I mean the product, and the rating, I, it's, it's named rating, but it's the existing number I have uh, about uh, that product as well. So if in case of the coffee, that rating, it will be zero. So they don't use that product right now. But from the other products, it will build out a pattern, and it will recommend you. Next one is actually writing a select star from ML recommend, and this will produce you all the users into the, into the feed. You can save that. It will be a, G, a JSON or a CSV. You export it. You can pick the first 1,000, and you have your meshing model working in your business. This is an extended example when you wire in one single user. For query, often people ask me that, OK, that produces the entire database. How do I add one single user? This is an example how to add one single user. These slides are already on slideshare.net, so you could later copy examples from this. Let's conclude our talk today. So benefits of BigQuery is actually to democratize the machine learning. So it's actually, you don't need to be a SQL developer in order to build your first uh, machine learning model. You can have a generalist team. Often in companies, they are dedicated machine learning teams, or wish they should have a machine learning team. Usually, there is one, two developer working at home trying out some models. Increases innovation because you can do a lot of iteration in the SQL. You can test. So you can test this 100 times, 1,000 of times, and so on. And the mobile or model serves a purpose. So it's easy to change recycle. So not as, a, as in a factory, like build out a car, and in order to build out another model, you need to build out in two years a new car. No, in, in machine learning, you just write a new select statement, you write a new model for it, and you can try out this, which gum gives you better results for it. And the possibilities are endless. So you can create customer value, predict funnel conversions. So I have a lot of products where actually there are a lot of websites in, in what we develop, a lot of websites. And we need to funnel the user to the shortest track to actually buy something on the website. But there are so many pages and so on that I need to find out their respective way. Using machine learning, I can actually, the step is a feature. Like, uh, if, if it reaches a page, it means that it has coffee or it has fruit, has vegetable. And all this information is, is attributes in a table. In a better example, booking.com, who uses booking.com? Have heard? Everyone? Good. Booking.com, you know, has these features, has bathroom, has TV, how many rooms. They have in machine learning, in BigQuery, like 500 columns. All the feature is uh, actually 0, 01. Has kitchen, has bathroom, has all the feature is 0, 01. And they wrote a machine learning model to actually build out uh, different uh, recommendation algorithms for the user. Game, uh, in the game industry, not sure if you are able, if they are here, the game developers. In the game uh, uh, industry, you could apply machine learning very well to actually build out new scenarios, variations to it. Because uh, you name that you, the, you, you have 10 tabs, steps to actually uh, reach something, but uh, those ten, 10 steps uh, have difficult, uh, dif different difficulty, and you can actually uh, do a machine learning model to actually produce for the user the best one. The best one is not the easiest, the hardest, the best one, based on the following track for the user. Why to choose the best one? Because the user will love it. And this concludes uh, my talk. Uh, I have 
one-on-one -on -one session outside. And um, thank you. Oh.